or on edge? <laughs> no, I didn't, not, not right now. <laughs> you always talk right when I'm starting. I'm like, well, okay. Well, there was a lot of silence. Because I'm starting, clicking then... on live. Well, I I'm... felt like you waited to click live until I started talking. <laughs> no. Are we live now? Yes. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> So, Gosh. you know, Yay. you know, back, get yourselves together. Yeah. This is <laughs> Pull a yourselves professional, together. <laughs> we're professional. We're a professional no. band. We, I, do, I think we're a professional band. Do you guys think we're a professional band? Yeah. I think we are now that we have professional members <laughs> in the band. You can't, we actually can't say this because Javi's not here, but. I guess. He well, counts. I wasn't really calling out Javi in that. I know. I was just saying. Um, oh, Alex but... said yes. Alex is on. Hey, Alex. He says yes. When I nice. say that, I feel like two definitions of professional. Okay. The first one means, do you do this for a living? Do you pay your bills with it? And whatever, whatever, your car insurance with it. And it's like, in that sense, I, not yet. <laughs> Um, we do have our patrons. We do have our lovely supporters. We love you guys. And we do make our streaming dollars and things like that. But you know, income, sorry to burst everyone's bubble. But and then but on the other hand, are we like professionals? Like, do we know what we're doing? Do we use professional gear? Are we professional when we show up to a gig? And like, you know what I mean? We're not a bunch of like riffraff. Yeah, that's that's, that's how what I, I mean. That's I, how yeah, I, was, I didn't take yeah. it from a money thing. I was like we're respectable adults that uh take this seriously but i wouldn't call serious. myself a professional musician right because like you're introducing but, somebody at a party you're just like hey i'm a professional that means like that's all you do is music well i, I, well, like, I don't think i it. like yeah i like to think of it as we we do get paid to play music that is a profession true. you know yeah there's I lots mean, of people who have multiple true. professions yes yes, yes. okay not, okay you know. fair fair <laughs> so <laughs> right. we're just like multi-talented <laughs> one of, we have hard, yeah yeah music is one of our one of our talents. professions you know what i love that that is so true way to own it it is one of our profet one of my professions so true because we Absolutely. do positive mindset TJ. we do we do have the the youtube ad <laughs> revenue or whatever it is coming in we do have all of that from you lovely people watching right now or whatever i don't know if we make money on these but maybe we should try i, I think we get <laughs> on twitch a little we bit from streaming if you get subscription if you mm. subscribe to us on twitch we get your little 250 a month out of your five dollars um, if you gift subs, we get some of that money too. And if you super chat us on YouTube, we get a little tip. So, you know, it's Steve's birthday. So shower him with dollar bills, y'all. Steve. <laughs> uh, hey. My, uh... There he is. <laughs> yeah, one well, of my friends like, messaged me and he was like, happy birthday, you slut. <laughs> and hey. I was just like, <laughs> I was like uh, and of course, it's one of my gay friends. And I was just like, well... So far, it's an okay birthday, but it could be sluttier, I guess. <laughs> so, um, if it, I think if the stream showers me with dollar bills, that would make this a slutty birthday, right? I don't, you know, <laughs> there's a fine line. There's a fine line in that context because a professional dancer and a sex worker, you know, we don't call them sluts. That's different. That's, That's derogatory. True. That's true. Yeah. So, that well, would, was, but so see, I'm not actually a professional. <laughs> I'm not actually a professional. I'm just like, you know, I guess being slutty, and then people are. Yeah. Being, yeah, well, I'm, yeah. I mean, yeah, so it would be slutty. slutty if so get a little you slutty. Didn't make any money. Yeah. <laughs> but can you say? Can we say slutty anymore? Is this a thing? I don't know. I yeah, don't, I really don't know. know. Like, I feel. I feel very like. A, I don't really say it anymore, right? Yeah, I don't really. It's, I mean, we could tough. just you could beep and beep it out, bleep it out. <laughs> I, I <laughs> for feel the, like for um, the podcast. <laughs> no, like it's like, not like I don't know, like it's not a dirty word, but I'm talking like political correct, the environment, like the, right the climate. or derogatory. Yeah, I'm like yeah. It's, it's pretty much one of those things where I'm like, mm, like yeah, don't really. I don't know. I just but it's funny it's, that you're it's like, like I get it. Your friend, just, yeah, like your yeah. friend. It's like I get it. I want to yeah. be respectful always but at the same time i hate the vocabulary is just narrowing and narrowing and narrowing and it's like i 
there's well, less and less things we're... that I can say. And it's just like, you know, it's, it's frustrating to always have to like second guess. It's funny because um, Smoke, I actually spoken thought about like this a true the other day. privileged white male. <laughs> there's so much I can't, I can't say, say anymore. Anything. Oh, hey, that's not exclusive to me. Everybody has to I'm, speak their mind. I'm teasing you. We, um, we love to tease each other in this band for those of you who couldn't catch that drip. Right. I'm just teasing you. Mm. But you I know. but I saw I thought about this the other day because somebody made a post on uh my friend I won't say his name because it doesn't matter, but he made a post and it was something like it was one of those like this is you know what I should be thinking about and then this is my brain and it was the picture of that guy, I don't know if you all watch It's Always in Sunny Philadelphia, but there's an episode where D dates a rapper. Oh, and yeah. And the rapper is yeah. this like, mm-hmm. guy, and he yeah. always does this arm. And, and well, the the gang, the guys, think he's retarded. <laughs> and that's yes. what they say. And they yes. tell yeah. D that. Yes. And so it's his face. And so I was like, wanted to quote it. But <laughs> before it, I was just like, before you all get offended, this is a quote from the show. Yeah. And I was like, Matt, looks like your brain's retarded to quote the show. But yeah, it was just like, you know, it's weird nowadays because it's like, you see that and it's just like, oh, it's just funny. It's a show. But you have to like pause and be like, can I still say you're retarded? Which technically I was never allowed to say retarded. Yeah. Because my mother. Yeah, I, yeah. It's pretty much like something that, you know, you don't want to say. I always right. was heard that, you know, you just knew not to say that word. Well, especially like. in my house, because my mom used to teach mentally handicapped kids. So mm. she was very close to them and uh, she did not like that word. So she would ban it from our house. Well, that's good. Yeah. That's a good way of yeah, I mean, saying it. Yeah, my mom banned it. And but yeah, when I think of like slut, <laughs> slutty. <laughs> I don't I don't know if I even really hear it that much anymore. Like not just I don't know. In the context of the word, I guess I just don't hear people saying it too much. It really, but... the only time I ever hear it is just my gay friends, friends. calling each other sluts. Yeah. yeah. It's like you know. when I went through a whole phase, probably around when I met you guys and we formed the band where like everyone was bitches. Like, hey, bitches, what are we doing tonight? Bitches, this, da, 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 da. And, like, I don't, like, that to me was never offensive. Like, if my, like, me and my best friend say, hey, bitch, you know, when we text each other. So, like, that to me is, like, not a big deal. But I just don't do it as much anymore. If you substitute I don't call her a slut, though. I'm not like, hey, slut. Like, no. If you a bitch, then it's okay. Oh, if you say bitch. Ah, okay. You know, it's like if you change the ER an A and you're a rapper then it's okay so I have I, a couple <laughs> of comments like, I'm right back let's get back to the comments um, so <laughs> little Mr. Ragdoll says hello and hi and happy birthday Steve um, Sarah says happy birthday Steve Calypso mornings I love never look back it's part of my work playlist awesome repping never look back I love it um, thank you and yes. hello to um, Cozy Coyote, I think. Um, and I love this little like emoji, the little cat with the sunglasses. Um, <laughs> we, I, I think on Discord, we have the punk rock kitty cat like uh, emoji emote. Um, so join us on Discord and somebody maybe will be kind enough to post a link. And speaking of everything, all of that. E R K C. Uh, just Alex said in the chat that he did the math because right now Spotify is giving everybody their 2021 in review and he said he listened to Punk Rock Kitty Cat for 2,000 hours. That's crazy. I don't think that's How is that possible? Are there even 2,000 hours in in a a year? (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. He he says Spotify tells me it's 8,000 times played. That's crazy. Wow. And when did we so release did he, it? Uh, so earlier it, this year. So I don't know. Alex, were you actually listening I know, every time? I think or there was, was it just bu- on I mean, repeat in the background or something? I want to do them. Like, so there's 365 days in a year, right? Yeah. yeah. Right? 
And so if there were 8,000 plays a day, you said? Or no. no, in total, total. In total. No, so how, that's what I'm asking. So you how, how many plays days? a day? Yeah. Okay. Total. What's the equivalent? Dude, let me tell you, speaking of this, <clears throat> because at one point over the course of like earlier this year, I had realized I had played Animal Crossing for 500 hours. Nice. <laughs> it's true. I am up to about six six fifty now. It's really kind of embarrassing. And I did that math, and that was like twelve days t- total. Of That's not, only six hundred hours, or five hundred hours was like twelve days total. I was like, how many days of my life was I just <laughs> playing Animal Crossing? And for my defense, obviously, twenty twenty, we were quarantined, and I I did have the game during a lot of that, so. But that was the point when I when I looked at that, I was like, I have to stop playing. So I stopped playing. And now that I have the DLC, I'm like back on it. And I played yesterday for like eight hours. I'm not even exaggerating. <laughs> it's really embarrassing, but I can't stop. Um, but honestly, That's to good. me, that makes me feel better. Because like, it's like if I look at a game and it's like, oh, you played 100 hours. When you think of 100 hours, you're like, oh, that's so long. But then when you break it down to days and think, okay, I've had this game for like six months and I played it 100 hours in six months and that's, you know, only a few days, then it doesn't feel that bad because it's like in the grand scheme of six months and how many days are in that span, it wasn't like that consumed the majority of my life or anything, you know? So I think yeah. breaking it down into days makes you feel better about the length I of think, time played. Yeah, you could also look at it as like you're getting your money's worth. So like, like, <laughs> I don't I don't know. I don't think it's a bad thing to but maybe that's just me like, you know, an excuse so because I like playing games. So what's your <laughs> but, what's right. your highest? You guys do you guys track your hours? Like what's your record? I mine was Breath of the Wild. I can't remember what it was. I gotta look, but it was absurd. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll have to look because actually, um, Xbox just did. They have this virtual, um, it's like a virtual museum thing because Xbox is twenty years old. They had their anniversary, so they did this virtual museum thing online where you can go walk through and it gives stats for all their consoles and games but you can if you have an account with them you can log in and walk through and it gives you specific stats for yourself like your if you had so i've had my gamer tag with xbox since the very beginning one so it tells you like this is the date you first logged in on this console on the original or the xbox 360 this is the first game you played on it and it like also tells you like this game this is one of the games you played the most um or like this is how apparently i've played a total of 720 something games in 20 years on xbox dude what's your handle uh the dillinger oh okay Mm. okay Um, i knew that i was like "Mm, it's gonna be something embarrassing because it was 20 (laughs) years ago but (laughs) <laughs> no, I was a but cool metalhead. It's cool. And so I know. Just like, that is a cool it's handle. It's a cool <laughs> handle. Yes. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, <laughs> not all of those games I like played front to back. A lot of those are just like, oh, I'm going to download and try it, the demo, and I played it for like five minutes. But I was like, that's an interesting stat. But honestly, I don't think I've played any game, especially a single player game, more than like 100, 150 hours. I think maybe Skyrim would be like, the most but if i was going to think of a lot of hours it would probably be, be get something in high school like halo 2 or mm. the first modern warfare or one of those multiplayer games when they first came out and you were just playing with your friends like every night and every weekend i feel like that would yeah because you hours. play those for like a couple of hours like the thing with animal crossing is that the time gets away from me everything you have to do on the game is very like time consuming. And I don't know if that's by design because it's meant to be like kind of chill and relaxing, but like every little thing you have to do takes time. So like the next thing I look over and an hour has passed and I'm like, okay. And you know, then two hours and then whatever. (sighs) But I'm like still so enthralled in the game. Like, I guess it's a good Testament to the game 
Like, you can sit there and play it for hours. Like, it doesn't get boring at all. Same thing with games like Skyrim, Fallout. I don't know. I probably easily did, I don't know, 100-something hours on both of those games or more, maybe more. I get very, like, addicted to a game. And then they keep bringing out the new versions. They just released a... Like Skyrim Enhanced Edition for the new oh yeah 4K Jordan consoles. Jordan has it and we have the PS5 and it was like nice. <sighs> insane looking and he's like you got to restart Skyrim and I'm like I was like babe I don't know if I'm ready because <laughs> Animal Crossing is my life and I'm not done with Animal Crossing yet and if I dive into Skyrim that will a hundred percent be my life. I know I, I streamed like a Skyrim on here and everyone thought it was my first day playing. And I was like, no, you have no idea. I played for hours, hours, hundreds of hours. I was like a level 60 or something. And I was like, no, I just, it, it, if you stop playing for like a week, you're like, I don't know what to do. Like, I don't know what the controllers mean. I don't know how to do anything. Like you got to just restart the game. Don't you think? Josh? I've never played Skyrim. Mm. Well, you, like if you play any game though like if you step away from it isn't it hard to get back especially like a big um, open world game it's like yeah where yeah like oh, where yeah, am absolutely. i and then you have all these skills but you have no idea what your guns do no idea what your mods do no and then you're you're uh, at the high level so your enemies are harder to beat yeah that's how i am with uh assassin's creed those games i always want to try them out but they make them so massive and there's so much to do, and a lot of it's tedious that I'll put a lot of hours into, like, 50 or 60 hours, and then I'll get bored, and I'll step away. And then, like, months later, I'll be like, hey, I want to go back. I never finished that. I, I want to go back and finish it. But then I jump in, and I'm like, exactly what you said. It's like, where even am I? Like, what quest am I on? Like, what am I doing here? And it just feels weird. You, But I'm not going to start it over. Um. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, uh, I then you just move command... on to a new game. It's like I, I don't know. Games aren't <laughs> meant to be played like forever. They just come out with. I don't new know. Ones. Some of them they purposely make to like keep you in it, especially yeah. nowadays with all these like, like DLC games of service games like Destiny and World of Warcraft. I mean, people are still playing that, and it came out in like early two thousands. True, you know, because it's constantly That's being true. updated, but. Honestly, I commend any of you, like you, TJ or Josh, who can like put that many hours into a game because I just I feel like I'm so ADD. I just I get I have FOMO so bad, and there's so many games that come out that it's like I want to try everything, and then, so it's like I'll start a game and I'll like it, but then this next game's just right around the corner, and it's like oh I want to check that out, so I'll move on, and I find myself more and more these days like. You know, it didn't affect me as much when I was a kid because, like, growing up, there was only, like, two or three big heavy hitter games that came out a year. Like, now, you know, there's between indie developers and, like, AAA studios, there's stuff coming out every week. And so I just find myself, I rarely finish a game anymore because I just, I'll play it and I really like it. But then the next thing's here and I'm like, all right, I'm moving on. Bye, Felicia. No (laughs) more assassin's creed (laughs) see i'm definitely it's funny because i'm the opposite but i definitely get that like urge like i have a just a list like of 10 games i want to play but i'm such a completionist on the game i'm currently playing like i have to like i have to do everything where i feel like i don't know i'm not experiencing the full game (laughs) you know it's a curse but it is what it is. <laughs> I kind of feel the same way. I love that you said that you were a completionist, but I don't consider myself a completionist, but I am very that. I am very like, I need to see every corner of the map of Skyrim. I need to go to the end of it until it stops going because yeah. you will find some incredible stuff if you're on a game like that. What's a game that you played like a ton, Josh? What are you into? I mean, the last one... I mean, I played it over a span of two years and it was definitely Breath of the Wild was the one because it was just so huge. That's the Zelda, the new Zelda. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I did every, I did, so I did pretty much everything you could do in it. I even found all those damn seeds. Like, yeah, it was, (laughs) uh, yeah, the Korok seeds. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I would not even recommend doing that because it's really... 
but I could make it, a really like, mean joke right now. <laughs> you're still sing- was, you're I- still single, right, John? <laughs> I spent two yes. years playing Breath of the Wild. I, don't, I probably <laughs> no time for girls. Yes, no, for real though. I'm like, yeah. I I'm was sorry. Like, sorry. I had ladies. to go there. I had to go there because <laughs> I'm no, just picturing you like, well, because I know what I do, right? I get up from I get up, and I literally like turn on the switch, and I'm like, mm, time to check on my babies and my villagers and do yeah. this. And you're probably like, time to go find another fucking seed. Like, it's just like becomes <laughs> your day. It was, uh, yeah, I mean, it, in the, the crazy thing is like, so I got, cause in order to get that 100% like little thing on your map, you have to find all the seeds. And I was like, damn it. So that, yeah, it took me that long. Um, and, uh, but there's still stuff to do. Like, even after you beat the game, which I haven't like played it for probably a whole nother year now, but like. Uh, there's still stuff to do even after completing all the side missions and all the, like the campaign and stuff. I'm just like, I, it's just there's enough. DLC, it. yeah. yeah. There's DLC. And then there's like, uh, you can like get more like, like medals if you go and kill so many like enemies or whatever. And I'm just like, yeah, but then, so it was cool, but I definitely, I think that's why I like games that are more linear. Cause I like completing everything and I'm fine with like a game, like, resident evil or the last of us or something where it's like it's pretty linear but there's still a lot of cool side stuff to do but it's not overwhelming you know a hundred percent yeah that's that's me it's good it's because it's not that i don't like to complete the game like i want to because that's another thing how they get you it's like your person i want to check every box like i want to see that check mark or the line through it but yeah those big open world games even like skyrim and stuff that i love that i've put up a ton of hours i eventually get to a point where i either burn myself out or i'm just like i don't have the patience to do all that but that's why i do like like you mentioned like perfect example for me resident evil that's one of my favorite se- um, series ever like that series or like the tomb raider games or yeah uh, jedi fallen order came out not that long ago and they're exactly like you said they're like open linear it's like a singular story that you can go through but the world's big enough that they have like little secrets and clues laying around and so those games are the games that i'll like close to 100 percent because it's it it feels more obtainable. you can finish can it within like a yeah. week or so right yeah and then you yeah. can go back through and play it a second time and like you know try to collect all the things you missed it's yeah it's definitely feels more feasible and and obtainable which it i think that's the key for me it's not daunting like these big open world games it seems impossible yeah i don't think i don't i don't know if it's supposed to be possible like i think they're designed so that you never finish them or never start they, there's a main storyline there's a main quest but you know right there's so mm. you will never finish every side quest ever i think that's absolutely impossible unless you're a professional video game player that you get paid to sit on your ass and do that all day you can never finish every single side quest like especially fallout that fucking farmer dude when you first start playing the game there's another village that needs help or whatever there's another settlement oh, remember yeah, that yeah. guy and it's just like and the memes were gold right <laughs> but like he you do one and he's like oh we have another one oh we have another one and then all of a sudden like another you know settlement would be under attack or something and it's just like I just want to do the main storyline, but you get so caught up in all this other stuff and you end up in a completely different like uh, world. And then the next thing you know, it's three days later. Right. <laughs> You're just like, I haven't gotten off my couch. Fuck. Cause it is. So... It's Go like, ahead. it's, it's like being like, it, um, I think the reason I like it and my, people in general like it so much is it is like being in a movie it is like playing a character in a movie and you get to direct what happens next because of yeah, how incredible the graphics are. It mm-hmm. feels like you're watching cinema. Yeah. Um, man, one of those games, and this pissed me off is, so Far Cry 6, um, Far Cry is one of my favorite series and I've beat every Far Cry. Now I haven't done everything in there but i've at least gone through and done the story seen it front to end well i've been playing far cry 6 well i i got to this point 
where the main quests aren't like showing up anymore I and mean, they're not like triggering and i'm like oh there's these little collect-a-thon side quest things but i don't really feel like going around this giant ass map and burning down every billboard to like complete that and there's like some side stories but it, it's like why can't where's the next main mission i was like i just want to see the end i want to see what carlo esposito or whatever his character what happens with his son and i like looked it up online like you know what's the next quest i can see the last one that i finished what should be next and i'm like how do you start this quest and i'm going to the places and it's just not triggering i don't know if it's a glitch in the game but i'm like so i just put it aside and i haven't played it in over a month and it's annoying me because it's like i've finished every far cry it's like i want to finish it but there's some kind of bug and i'm just kind of stuck so i guess mm. halo it is <laughs> playing a lot of halo um i want to yeah. go to a couple comments um uh gil says happy birthday natty is in the house um Doolin's in the house so shout out uh Cozy Coyote said Punk Rock Kitty Cat is the first song they learned to play on guitar. Nice. Is, nice. That's awesome. It's a pretty, uh, like, I, I'm like, that's a good first song because it's simple. I know because I wrote it. <laughs> 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 like, it, it's pretty simple, but I love it. I love punk rock, and that was a fun one to write. Um, I mean, I yeah, didn't write the lyrics. Yeah, send us a recording lyrics, of but... you playing <clears throat> on guitar. Yeah, so make a little video. Yeah. Um, And Alex says that it, punk rock kitty cat ha is on repeat like i think he just plays it to have like noise on in the background i guess well mm. i also feel like just alex lives in like some kind of time vortex <laughs> where like normal time doesn't affect him the same because he says he's played eleven thousand hours of gta, GTA 5, 5. Which i saw that uh, did you mean one thousand or eleven well no gta 5 has been out for a while it has been yeah. out so, for a while yeah Years. That's another one of those games that Dude, like you can I just feel like always play. Yeah. Right? I don't know. I'm a, I'm a little afraid to play GTA just knowing my addictive like personality. I'm like I think that game's hilarious. I would just I don't even know. I there's and there's no plot. Really? Is there? There sort of is. I don't know. Yeah, there's there's the there's... main storyline. Um but I've never really played it. I've only like played it, um, you know, with other people or, or, you know, somebody else is playing it. It's a really fun, really cool game. To me, it's kind of crazy that they haven't put out a new one in a while. Right. That's what, yeah. but they did uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. So that studio is kind of busy with that. Mm. It kind of alternates. They're getting kind of a lot of flack right now because they released like a, hd collection of three of the old gran turismos and apparently they're all like broken and glitchy and it's a really bad like version or something people are complaining but yeah i don't know who knows when the next gta will come out i i was never this this is the steven hot take it's like i know people love rockstar but i've never really gotten into their games and i know like red dead and grand turismo are like some of the most popular games in the world and they make tons of money and people love them i could never get into them i don't know if it's just that i don't care about the vibe and setting i'm not into gangsters i'm not into cowboys um or i to me the gameplay always kind of felt clunky it's like oh it's cool it's a big open world there's a lot to do i get the appeal but i was like the driving never felt great the gunplay never really felt great it all like sort of seemed it like it's good enough but just if if i'm gonna drive in a game i'd rather you know there's a bunch of other games where the driving feels way better or if i'm gonna play a third person shooter there's so many other games that like you know last of us or whatever where it just it feels better yeah um so i don't know I, i'm sure i'd get a lot of backlash for saying it but i, I just think i don't GTA think gta is overrated <laughs> i've never yeah. actually played gta 5 i think the last one i played was san andreas which at the time i loved it but it definitely was buggy even at that time because it was huge for like the ps2 right. 
Um, and of course, go if I like played it now, I'd probably be like, holy shit, like the controls would be so outdated. But so I don't know how like smooth GTA 5 would be. I'm sure it is. I'm for sure it's pretty like runs pretty well now with all the updates. I mean, it's still, yeah. you know. I heard the HD version was great, like ray tracing and all that. Mm. People are talking um, about how to drag your friends in Red Dead Redemption, drag them behind your horse and <laughs> throw dynamite <laughs> at them and stuff. I think that's kind of the appeal of uh, Grand Theft Auto, too, because, like, you can do whatever you want. You can walk up to people and just punch them and start a fight with them. Like, it's kind of hilarious. Yeah. And it's kind of right. like a party game. Like, I feel like with Gran Turismo, games like that, it's about, like, the Maddens and all of that. It's, like casual gameplay for like casual gamers or somebody that doesn't really like you know what I mean like I don't know not to say that those aren't like obviously super involved massive games but the type like I feel like you know Steve you're more into like science fiction and storylines and things like that where those games don't really offer that right or or they have it it's just hard to focus on it because there's so much other stuff that distracts you Mm -hmm. from the main story yeah um yeah it's like i just want to but but even still i mean even story driven linear games i have a hard time telling you what all happened because i get so caught up in the like spectacle or the the (laughs) gameplay that's what i'm not even like paying attention to what they're like saying or that's what's so funny to me about animal crossing and the appeal is like there is no like you're you need fruit and to buy a house and then you get a house and then you can decorate it. And the DLC is literally just decorating houses. And I'm just like, I can't stop. Yeah. They call them chore games or like management games. Like it's, or yeah, it's like a sim game, like the I, Sims and I, or and Sim I, City. It's like yeah. people want to just like kind of manage and organize. And it does kind of make, I don't, it doesn't make me feel like I have my life together knowing that I played the game for 600 hours. It makes me feel like a loser, but it's like it, it's total like fantasy world like oh I want to decorate my house like this one day or it's just like you're just decorating houses all day that's literally what I've been mm-hmm. doing in the game and like then you can decorate a hospital oh cool and you get all these like cool items and like eventually you can use some of the items on like your island in your house so then you can make it again look perfect and there's a whole bunch of people who will like destroy their island and restart the game to make it like fresh for them again, to make it like challenging for them, because it's really not after so many hours of playing, you have all the like, but like, yeah, chopping wood and fishing and things like that. And like doing that, 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 there's no point. You just sell it to make money to like buy furniture with. It's like on paper (laughs) sounds really weird. Right. You know what you would like? (laughs) There was a game. It was called like, forget what it was called but it's like a flipper game it's like a house flipper it's like you go you get this old house you can demo it you can like build like mm. add new construct new walls but then you go and decorate it and remodel it and it's basically <laughs> it's all it is it's it's basically it's more realistic looking and mm-hmm. 3d but it's like strictly the house decorating portion of animal crossing yeah. without all the farming and <laughs> i mean people love the farming too there's every island has its own like flavor you know like there's a there's so many people like i think a lot of the reason you get inspiration from other people i don't know if you guys follow games online but like being part of like an animal crossing like facebook group and just every single day a picture 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 and they were like i want to do that i want to learn how to do that i want to do that to my room and my house and whatever you get just like so inspired by these like beautiful islands and i don't know i'm too shy to like share mine i'm too scared to have like people come to (laughs) my like strangers come to my island (laughs) i'm afraid they're gonna like fuck it up in some way which you really can't but it's yeah it's a big community of people and I'm sure there's that on and there's memes and funny and people make jokes and and things like that. So I like am involved. Like I'm very into all of that. It's so sad. Grown ass woman. 
did i used to just like <laughs> be a part of the groups where they would um alert you when so and so was going to sell and it would tell you the turnip prices yeah was a, and it was like you could there was a facebook group that i used to be in where you could like get with people to try to let them on your island to sell and trade turnips and like get a bunch of money real quick oh um, yeah but that was way back at the beginning and then i i fell off like a lot of a lot of those things it just it was i'd played it a lot right yeah. up front and then i just eventually moved on to something else <laughs> Doolin just said he's going to find my island and funnel cocaine through it like Pablo Escobar. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Dude, what people do in the game is th there's a lot of people who like, because you pluck weeds and like you can sell weeds in the game. Like a lot of people just, and there's like items that look like bongs and stuff. Like people like, they kind of like mm -hmm. customize items to like make their little grow houses. And it's actually really <laughs> funny, but that's like, that's, animal crossing people for you you know what i mean they're like happy hippie stoner people like they're nobody's doing gta stuff and and <laughs> you know you get reported right. to nintendo so quickly like, yeah yeah it's fun because people are just so creative it's mm. cool to see yeah. kind of like minecraft you know minecraft was always one of those like it's really cool to see all the stuff like people came up with and um it's funny like a lot of people start their careers that way like um, when games give you the tools to kind of mess around in their worlds and create things like that game that's super big right now that Netflix has a show for League of Legends, like that whole genre, the MOBAs or whatever, was somebody way back in the day on like StarCraft, I think it was, like made their own fan mode or something that you could play online and it was so fun that like companies are like wow let's get with you buy this up and create a whole new genre with it um so who knows what's going to spawn from animal crossing like what what's the next game genre well i didn't be? know there was already i foolishly i suppose didn't know there was already tons of other animal crossing games like it was a game for like game boy like yeah it's, it's yeah, not yeah. new the gamecube like i played yeah. one a little bit on gamecube yeah it's it's been around a while and i don't know if it started that genre but it was definitely one of the more popular and there's so many like i really like stardew valley which is on switch and it's a very kind of old school is looking stardew pixel art. valley like an animal crossing iteration or yeah, not. it's like a yeah. one guy made it and it's like pixel old pixel art. It looks like an old like Super Nintendo game or whatever, but it, it's like again it's a farming simulator and you farm, but you walk around and the people in the village give you tasks, you can build relationships and there's some combat to it. Stardew Valley is really great. I had a I did that for a long, play that for a while. Um so, man, we really kind of just jumped into this episode and <laughs> just went talked down a about fucking video games. We <laughs> video haven't even caught yeah. up with each other. Oh, I'm trying <laughs> yeah, to make so you. A, was, here's I mean, your birthday we... hat, Steve. If I tried to make you birthday hat, okay, it looks really dumb. <laughs> Wait, I don't know how Wait, to upload what? a PNG to the stream, but I put a little bit of type above your head, and it looks like a hat. So don't don't move. All okay. Right. I don't know. I don't know how to do a PNG. I'll have to Google it n next time. Or like an overlay. Oh, I Basically I like an it. overlay. <laughs> Anywho. Looks great. That's great. Yeah. I don't know how else. I was like, how else do I do this? <laughs> <laughs> Anywho. Oh, I see it. Okay. I got to be like right here. You literally just fucked it up totally. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Um. I'm going to keep moving, but, um, no, yeah. So we haven't streamed in a while. Um, you know, we've been gone and then we had vacations. So how has everybody been? How was your vacation? Uh, start with Josh. Josh, tell us about your vacation week. 
Yeah, um, it was nice. I mean, Thanksgiving, you know, <laughs> just uh, hung out with family, ate good food, and uh, it was really, yeah, it was really not a lot. I mean, I, I definitely, it was vacation from the stream, but I was definitely busy with school. <laughs> but because, <laughs> uh, you know, they don't, we had Thanksgiving off, but I'd like take home exams and stuff. But but it was nice. It was nice seeing family. I don't really, I haven't seen them recently. And my like sister and brother-in-law came in town. Um, and my sister ended up having like a Christmas, like PJ party. So that was, that was fun. Like, uh, I think that was Friday after Thanksgiving. So mm -hmm. yeah, so it was nice. It was nice getting to see um, family and my sister and everybody. So other than that, I mean, uh, I saw Ghostbusters twice. <laughs> nice. So yeah, oh, which no, I would say no spoilers because I haven't. No, seen no. It. Yeah, no. I was never. I, I won't spoil anything, but it's it's really good. Um, I'd say it's even better the second time. Kind of. I don't know because like the first time, I had so much like. I was just ready for it. And I'm just thinking of all these things that could happen, you know, and stuff, but I don't know, to me, it, they did it perfectly. It was, it's a really good uh, third film for the franchise. And uh, yeah. Well, I was uh, listening to something and I, I feel like in the timeline or the, it's kind of almost technically a sequel to the original. It's almost like negating the second movie even. It, it um, definitely cause... yeah but the only there are caveats though because there are honestly i think the biggest one is where ray works is from the second like well if you saw the second movie like he has a and like a bookstore like an occult bookstore or whatever yeah like right. it's called like ray's occult or something and uh so the stacked books is a reference to that well that that's a reference from the first movie no it's just where he's at like when she calls him because oh, you like okay, they yeah. kind of i mean they show that in the trailer so that's not spoiling anything and when he answers the phone he's in his shop so um but yeah honestly you would never even have had to see the second movie to see this one it's definitely really just like i don't know I, sometimes i mean i love the second movie for what it is just being a kid and stuff but it's just you know it is what it is i definitely like the, the first one is my yeah favorite. I, I heard I, the second one took a lot of cues from the cartoon like, i was gonna yeah. say a lot of the, style. Or the cartoon yeah 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 um, with the style it definitely went a little bit more zany than that, the, like kid friendly yeah um but yeah the thing i love the most about this new one and i thought was stellar about it like I probably had more fun watching it than any of the Ghostbusters, but I mean, I obviously loved the first one for just being what it was and kind of creating that whole world. But this one, it felt very Steven Spielberg, like eighties, nineties. It felt very Goonies. It felt, it felt very much like one of those kind of like those movies that were back to the future and all those films that were real popular in the eighties where it's like, sort of geared for young adults but it mature enough that like grown adults can also enjoy it enjoy it but you can tell it's you know geared more young but it's got that steven spielberg just sense of an adventure it's like yeah kids coming into a new town stuff's happening they're figuring it out the kids are smarter than the adults they're growing up real quick they're taking charge they're going on this adventure and like yeah. those are always my favorite movies like all that that spielberg style of film where it's like you feel like you're on an adventure and yeah. it's like it was like non-stop you know beginning to end it's just like boom 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 action action finding this new gear this new equipment learning how to use it going at it it was just yeah it was a lot of fun yeah no i felt the same way and i definitely want to add like uh the actress that plays like phoebe like she just she was is amazing. so good yeah and and then even like her sidekick like that podcast kid was hilarious <laughs> podcast, he was yeah funny. um but i think yeah uh even to add to that like it like 
I think the movie itself is just so good. Like even if it had nothing to do with Ghostbusters, it would just be a good movie. Like there's there's definitely like a smorgasbord of Ghostbuster stuff, you know, for fans. But I feel like yeah. yeah, yeah. But I feel like just as a movie on its own, it was just really good. But so my catching up turned into a movie review of yeah, Ghostbusters. Um, J- J- <laughs> but, J- JT Rock and Roller says it was written and directed by the original director's son. Yeah. Right. Yeah, oh, so. I did not know that. Um, also, Patty is in the house. He said, happy birthday. And Ivorella says she loves us. And happy birthday, Steve. With a bunch of like heart um, heart emoji. So that's cute. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of love in the chat. All the good. love. Send some more hearts and love, guys, because it'll show up and it looks really cute. <laughs> yeah. Feeling feeling better about the birthday already. Um, yeah. It's, um, speaking of really good movies and catching up, I uh, had to um, send this to... Um, I texted everybody a link and you all got it, but I'm just informing the chat. So I listen to a podcast that like reviews franchises, goes through them like scene for scene and they go through it and talk about it. And then they rank the, all the movies in that franchise. So say they like, they did all of the Marvel movies and so they watch them and they go through scene for scene. And then at the end of the episode, as they go through there, they rank them in an order like what what was the best marvel film to the worst one and so i always enjoy that because i'm a nerd and it you know i like hearing other people's opinions on the stuff that i like and i want to like listen and be like oh that's a terrible ranking i would have never put that there (laughs) they're absolutely right well we've got coming up at the end of the year is uh the matrix resurrection so they just started a in review of all the matrix movies and they're gonna each week do one of the matrix movies until the fourth one comes out and so i listened to the uh the walk or the review of the first one and it just got me so hyped and just like (laughs) everything they were talking about in the film and just like breaking it down and giving behind the scenes and talking about different secrets i was just like God, I love this movie so much. And so then I watched it again last night. And uh, I'm so, it, it is literally a perfect movie and oh, one yeah. of the greatest ever made, for sure. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so I'm so hyped. So I'm even going to watch the not so good sequels just to get hyped because I can't wait for the fourth one to come out. I'm, I'll definitely do that with The Matrix, but it's funny because I've been doing that just watching like, youtube guys review like the spider-man movies because a lot of people oh, yeah, are just yeah. watching them all um because i'm gonna definitely do that i'll watch every single one up to the new spider-man but um oh, they're doing in review of spider-man as well oh they are, so they, it's, okay. it's, they do two movies a week so they're doing a spider-man and then a matrix leading oh, up okay and so they just finished the last spider-man i re- was the amazing spider-man 2 okay. was the last one they did and so then they've got the two Tom Holland ones. And um, one of the guys on there, I agree 100% with his Spider-Man ranking. And the rest of them, I was like, no, guys, you're way <laughs> off. You're ranking the Andrew Garfield ones way too high. Yeah. Or dumping on the Tobey Maguire ones way too much. Like, Yeah. That's, I mean, I, I'd have to assume that Spider-Man 2 got to be the top on most of their lists. I mean, it's just, I feel like it's the pinnacle of Spider-Man movies. But, yeah, a lot of them put Amazing Spider-Man above Spider-Man Two. Really? Yeah, that's that's pretty wild to me. I mean, well, because they're purists, they they prefer the like um, the gadget web, web over the yeah. or, and they a big thing for them is they just feel like Tobey Maguire wasn't quippy enough. They like preferred Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man, like oh, okay. doing the jokes and the zingers that like were in the comic yeah um so i mean i get it but let's be real the two greatest spider-man movies so far are a thousand percent uh spider-man 2 and um into the spider-verse into the spider-verse i was gonna i was gonna ask if they are rating that one into their rating or just the live action ones but i think it's just the live action ones but they all love that one if if i were 
not including that, then my second favorite would be the first Tom Holland one. Yeah. The Vulture. Yeah. That's a good one. But I'm sure this one is going to like be up there. Yeah. Yeah. Was that uh, you? Oh, yeah. Was, I, was that you catching us up on your week? <laughs> Did that also turn uh, into a we, movie? We kind of just, yeah, we kind of just, well, <laughs> we went off into the Matrix and then in the Spider Man. And <laughs> It's just, yeah, it's a crazy I time just, for movies right now. <laughs> yeah, Josh's well, hype these, on Ghostbusters. Yeah, all these movies weren't re-hype. able to be made because of COVID. So, like, I feel like this year is just, like, a great year for films because they're just, like, only really greenlighting really good stuff because of, like, yeah. it's tough to have stuff made. And there's so many protocols and stuff. And I think stuff that fell through in 2020, they were just, like, you know, everyone's like anxious to get back out there and people want to make great movies and because there, there was there was kind of a lull because of nothing could really come out yeah yeah and uh i mentioned we were talking about the resident evil games earlier but the movie the new movie just came out i'm gonna go see it with a friend tomorrow you get the best reviews but to me video game movies never do and i'll still see it it'll be fun yeah but um yeah, if I was going to catch up on my week, like, uh, it was good. How was your Thanksgiving? It was good. I hosted this year, and so my parents flew up, and my sister and her boyfriend flew in from California, and they all stayed and hung out, and we had a lot of fun, and it rained on Thanksgiving, so, you know, we we just were cooking all day and eating and then, like, doing puzzles and playing board games and doing that kind of stuff, and then on the other days, kind of, like, just going around doing some hiking showing my sister and her boyfriend around like the touristy things in nashville like she wanted to like go to the shop so we went to like grimies and different things like that um but i did get stressed out because they put me on turkey duty and i was like i was gonna never say made did you make the turkey yeah i was like, yeah, I was like, like a grown-up thing like, to do yeah, literally Thanksgiving hinges on this. Like I could ruin Thanksgiving. <laughs> but um yeah, I was just not trying to pat my um back, but I mean these these are not my words. They're my sisters and my mother's, but they said that it's it was the best turkey we've ever had at wow. any family Thanksgiving. Wow. I was like, You're... okay. Damn, I Steve. guess I didn't screw it up. <laughs> You're a good cook though. I had Josh. Yeah, you're really good. I was, yeah, I was like real nervous. And I was like, I took, I was scrolling through Pinterest looking at recipes and I like kind of Frankensteined two recipes. Like I saw one that I was like, I like this, these seasonings better. Um, And then I'm going to take some techniques I learned from a friend for like keeping it moist and like combine those. But then this other one, I think the way they cook it sounds more right to me. So it was like I was taking like instructions from multiple recipes and just kind of like putting it together. Cool. That's awesome. And it worked out. And here's old Javi asking if we're still on. Just tell him no. Oh, no. (laughs) Yeah, hop on. All right. (laughs) Javi. Well, now I'm going to have to move Steve's hat. Uh, Oh, no. Oh, Oh, man. (laughs) Let's. Oh, he's in the waiting room. All right. Uh, I'll move. It's fine. I can handle it. Hey, buddy. Oh, Oh, no. no. Hey. (laughs) Such a good time. There we go. I got to move Steve's birthday hat. All right, there we go. <laughs> Thank you guys for suggesting that. I don't know, it's really crappy. I wish I could have I wish I could put a real like PNG. I'll learn how to do it cuz cuz there obviously is a way because I have the Nearly Dead's logo. <sighs> how do I do it though? All right, we're going to figure this out live. Why not? Hopefully it doesn't fuck up the stream. I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to download a quick PNG of a birthday hat. Well, while TJ does that, Javi, now that you're here, why don't you catch us up on your week? How was your holiday Wait a minute. and your Thanksgiving? <laughs> no. Wait a minute. Are you guys not live? We are live. We are live. Oh, you are live. I was like, okay, nice. 
We're just no, now we're getting all, to the catch-ups. <laughs> Are you wait? We were waiting on you this whole time, dude. No. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. <laughs> happy Happy birthday, Steve. Why? Thank you, Javi. That was very kind yeah. of you. I had it on my calendar uh, last night, and I was like, "Should I wait till midnight?" to text him or just like 8 a.m. when I wake up when you did <laughs> right yeah. I got a text at like 7 30 in the morning a group chat <laughs> well I was already up um, yeah so you didn't wake up. me up oh yeah I was up at three o'clock so because of clinical so damn Good god yeah but I can't text when I'm in the hospital so I have to wait till like I'm on a break or something probably a good thing you know people's lives on the line yeah you know <laughs> have you had to clean up anybody's like shit yet josh i don't do that no that's that's oh. what the nurses do okay i was gonna say everyone i've ever <laughs> yeah. known that does a clinical that's like horror stories of like they get yeah. stuck with like the worst people and you know it's just part of the job sometimes you yeah. gotta do it no i just take care of all up here so the breasts <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> come on man that was funny <laughs> um man so i have a friend and she works in the care center at the hospital and man she tells me some stories and it's just it's wild like it's honestly if i combined some of her stories that she told me it's almost like the movie seven like i'm just like how is this even a real thing like she had to in one of her rooms one of her patients was a guy that was like extremely extremely like obese like couldn't can't move so it's like she'd have to go in and like lift his folds and like clean where he would get like scarring and stuff from it all <laughs> rubbing together and pussing and stuff like Ew. that but then this other one, the saddest yeah. thing that I ever heard is it was kind of like the super gaunt guy in um, Seven. But she said one of their patients, it was this kid who was in his 20s, but had the mental capacity of somebody like in their teen or like in infancy and not because not because he was born you know, disabled, but because he was sheltered and closed to his house and closed off for the world for his whole life. And his parents didn't like teach it. Like, I think it was, it was just his mom and he was like neglected. So he didn't have any sort of education or anything for 23 years. And she said he was so skinny that you could see like all of the skeleton and like they had to have him on IVs and stuff. Cause he was like, pretty much locked in a closet like lived in a closet his whole life and not fed and like abused and i'm sorry and, i'm sorry i'm putting your hat on i'm really sorry that i'm laughing during this yeah I'm, it's like i'm so the sorry podcast you guys are probably the like, podcast. Like, so so yeah. insensitive yeah here i am talking about child abuse and just like Somebody's... horrific thing and tj's just laughing Should we just I'm let me just at her. i i'm just really oh. okay i'm okay hold on let me go ahead and hold on. Okay, I'm gonna like not mute the image, but I'm gonna, you know, we'll put it on you later. You the you got Love it me. though. Love you. <laughs> Anywho, yes, can please continue your story. I am sorry. I think that was about it. It was just he was super sickly, couldn't like barely eat because he had just been starved and abused his whole life. And I was just like, that is just like wild to me that anybody could do that to their own child or like, or it's, it's wild to hear the stories and be like, that stuff's real. And it's not just in the movies. Like, and it, yeah, and it's so sad, you know? And it's just like, I can't, you know, in this mental state, it's like, even with the hospital, like getting custody and like giving him to someone else, like adoption, like even, physically getting him healthy and all that he's not going to have a chance going out in the world because it's like he's already like basically an adult but has the mind of a child like he's not going to be able to take care of himself or you know do anything he, 
you know, he's still. There's a chance he's not, he's not messed up yet. (laughs) He's not tainted by the world. Or, 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 I don't know, you know. Yeah, what's worse? (laughs) No, that's, yeah, man, there's some, there's some dark stuff, but. But so the rule is Josh doesn't have to deal with that. <laughs> well, no, like I have, like I've seen some pretty crazy stuff. I mean, it's, but I don't know. It like motivates me. I I don't know. I see messed up stuff on the internet or on the news, you know, all the time. So it's like, I don't know. It, it's crazy. Like I, I <laughs> there is like an eighty year old who like his meth lab bro like like he looked like just like your, your average grandpa and his, he was cooking meth like it's crazy you know but so did i miss the topic for today is this like child yeah. trafficking yeah, we're, no i don't we're, know like, like we're <laughs> talking about steve's it was like Steve's super birthday. dark no i i don't even know how we got on that but we'll kind of segue back into steve's birthday and we're just kind of catching up. We've been talking about video games, how many hours we played certain games. That we've just been having like movies, a, talk an about interesting, movies just and... weird. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to put yeah. Steve's birthday hat back on. Okay. Okay. And right now hey. we're catching up on our week. So yeah. Steve, can yeah. you Josh point your went. webcam so your head has more space above it? <laughs> um, let's see. You have the same webcam I do, right? So just like point it towards the ceiling a little bit more. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it looks really stupid, but I am I am tickled. This is really Amused fun. Amused by it. I'm just oh, I there see we it. go. Hey, hey, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. I don't know if you guys ever like chat, like if you video chat with people on Facebook, you can do like the filters and like, it's a lot of fun and you look really silly and goofy. I just get a kick out of stuff like that. I talked to my sister on like Facebook messenger a lot, like kind of it's instead of, um, yeah, I don't know why FaceTime doesn't let you do shit like that. Like put a filter on, like you could be a fish and talking to somebody. It's hilarious. (laughs) You got it. You got to do it. But the hat looks great. Um, It's really good. Amazing. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so ha- Javi, how was your Thanksgiving? It was awesome. Uh, I had the family come into town and they got me, we did, we kind of did like Christmas and Thanksgiving all rolled up into one. So that was really awesome. Got to see my mom, dad, they got to see their grandbaby. I got to see my sister, my brother. They bought me a bottle of wine for Christmas. I was pretty happy. It was nice. Who cooked the turkey? My mom. Nice. She is a great cook. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She came in and redid the entire kitchen and just like dad took over, built like built some shelves for us. And I was like, the place is it's it's nice. It feels more like home. It's good. Nice. It's always good having the folks there. Your parents are awesome. Thanks. Yeah, they are. They're crazy and loud, but they're awesome. <laughs> How did, you ever, I... did I ever show you guys a picture of my mom uh, standing on top of a tractor and painting a barn? No. <laughs> I'll have to send it to you guys one day. She's a, she's a crazy old woman. <laughs> she's not old, Javi. Oh, she's old. <laughs> Dude. She's still young and spry. Pull oh, yeah. Life, she's, you life. know, I'm surprised she she is more active than pretty much both. My parents are more active than anyone I know <laughs> in their age. <laughs> or you're like, for sure, more active than me. Yeah, it's crazy. I went to the What gym. about y'all? I, the- I know I missed... I'm not repeating myself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. I was just going to say, speaking of being active, I went to the gym today for probably like the first time in like months. I had nice. been going. How'd you feel? Nice. Good. Feels great. I listened to a podcast, listened to my armchair expert. Oh my God. So good. They had an episode with Matt Damon 
and he talks a lot about goodwill hunting and just this Hollywood advice. And I don't know, it's, it's always cool hearing like other artists talk to other artists. Like, even though we're mm -hmm. not actors, like we still deal with the same years of rejection and things like that. I love hearing people who are like mega famous, like talk about that. And you're just like, man. And he was talking about, I don't know, Ocean's 12, which is like the sequel and being like, going to some premiere and everyone was like all about Brad Pitt, Brad Pitt, Brad Pitt. And like, not like he was chop liver. So it was pretty funny. Cause I'm like, you know what? It really, truly doesn't matter. No matter who you are, like, or how successful or famous you get, like, there's always going to be like people who just don't give a shit or care. So right, like, right. the yeah, point exactly. is like, do yeah. what you love. Okay. Him and Ben Affleck, when they were doing good will hunting back when they were in their twenties said, we need to make a movie that if it just ends up the v like a VHS back in the, that day, right? If it just ends up being a VHS that sits on my bookshelf, I want to be proud of it. And that's that was their key. And I'm like, this is everything. Like, that is, that's really it. When you're creating something, like wh when we write and we, we make music and songs and stuff, it's like, just do like that. That's that authenticity that people like, link on to right just do stay in your lane do what it is that you do and do it well and um you're going to succeed no matter what because you're going to be proud of what you've done there's a uh there's a guy that i follow and he's like a super huge knowledgeable guy as far as like the metal scene because he grew up on the east side like the east coast where all the metal and stuff was and like he said something that I that really resonated with me. He was like, you know, because he was talking about how Taylor Swift pre-recorded her old album. Which is kind of a bad like get... move, by the way. Yeah, yeah but his but his his point was, yeah, Taylor Swift can do it, but other bands probably is not a good career move because, you know it's just she's doing it for a different reason to get yeah. back at like her label but anyways uh he said um you know the pre the the production is not important it doesn't have to be perfect what what it is is like what your art is is like a snapshot in time and i thought that was really mm. cool another you know it's like yeah you listen to certain bands and you're like wow that was such a thing like you you know you hear an album and you're like that was definitely late 90s or that was you know yeah because it's like it's like even if if it's like shitty production like you even if you go back and re-record that song or whatever and make it sound awesome you're losing um maybe the energy that mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. there yeah. and it's like it makes mm -hmm. so much sense to me it's like yeah you're it's like taking a picture when you're making a song or right. whatever. It's like, yeah. you can't go back and be younger or whatever. Like you can't bottle that energy back up when you're older. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. The only thing that I think works is like not re-recording it, but like when some of the bands will re-release -re an album, but it's, it's like they're using the same audio files. They just do like a remix. So it's a little bit, it's like mixed better, or has a little bit more punch and polish to it but it's still all the same like vocal takes and guitar. It's all still the same thing. So I, I feel like in that instance, you still retain all the energy and everything that was there because that's recorded, but you're just making the fidelity slightly better. Like, you know, like the doing the Blu-ray version of the Matrix movies is a burst the VHS, you know, it's like you're just kind of, taking the original thing and just sort of up it to a modern modern file or something. But you're not reshooting the entire movie. Right, <laughs> right exactly. It's not a exactly. With, with John Wick in... <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I... Actually, you could argue it'd be better now because uh, Keanu is a better actor now. <laughs> he was pretty a poor actor back then whatever it steve it worked <laughs> what i was gonna add to javier's point of like the when you said the production doesn't matter like i think that's an interesting like 
there's something to be said for that as far as the pure art of songwriting. Obviously, you can write a, the most beautiful song in the world and it might never see the light of the day, which is fine. Like that's not nothing is stopping you from doing that. Um, what Matt Damon was saying on his thing, he kept saying like movies are a director's medium, not me as an actor or the writer. He's like the director takes that and they make it the in on that medium, which is film like they. So I was like, that reminds me of like producers. So producers to me are like recording is that's their thing. Like we we provide the talent and we provide the the song itself, like the shell, but like when they, when they pitch Goodwill Hunting, I mean, they're not sitting there being married to every single page. Like they had to go and, you know, once the producer and the, or sorry, the director gets a hold of it, then it, be, then it becomes, it gets life breathed into it. So I think that's why I personally love working with producers because I think they do like, that's their job is to bring out your best performance, just like a director and to have it serve the bigger picture of everything where you're not always um, thinking of that when you're performing. Like, it's 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 really cool. Like, I, I like working with producers. I like things to set, like do. But even working with a producer doesn't necessarily mean it has to be heavily produced, if that makes sense. I think it's just it's. Like their job an and their art and what they provide is to like take something at its core like take a song hey and if it's if it doesn't need to be changed then they don't change it but I think to tr work with somebody who is a very good producer what they will do is make it better and edit it in a way that like makes everything so much better yeah it's just it's an awareness it's like it's an awareness that it's like when you're when there's when you're going into a song you have so many different hats on and if you're just stuck on the you just have the singer's hat yeah. like you can't hear the entire song right or if you just have the guitar the guitarist yeah. hat you're not listening to the entire song yeah so it takes a producer to put the producer's hat on and say hey let's take all these parts and like find out how we can make the song like yeah we can all listen make to it, it in a, a, in a greater light yeah. Yeah. I, lo I love, I was, mm -hmm. I just, when he said that about directors, I was like, oh yeah. Because you know, the, the artists and the writer, you know, they butt heads and they can argue about things, but it's like, ultimately that's what they're there to do is like, this is the big vision of the movie and the, and the whole plot and the whole story. And I'm like, well, is, if that's not the same thing as making a record, like, I don't really know what is. Like, I just really, I loved that he said that. I was like, never thought of it that way before. But there's something to be said for, like, caring enough about your craft to, like, and then, you, yeah, and then you hand it over to somebody else. And you're like, well, this is in your hands now. Like, you got to work with that person for that reason. So he works specifically with uh, he picks project based on he wants to work with a particular director is what he said. And he's obviously gotten to work with like the best directors of all time. It's like if we were given the opportunity to work with one of our dream producers, you know, we I would in a heartbeat be like, here's the shell to like a hundred songs. You, you know, do your magic. That's why we're working with you. Like that would be a dream come true. But so many people and the way the industry is, we're all reliant on being able and expected to almost wear that hat when it's Do like everything. we're not producers. We are musicians like we play the music. We don't you know what I'm saying? Like it takes years of experience in schooling and having like an ear and things like that to like be your own producer. Like it's different than being your own engineer and being able to record something at your house. Like that's one thing. But I don't it's I don't know it's uh anyway I'm I mean it, it just takes it it takes the love of it you know like you can't I mean there's two ways to do it you can either go and knock on people's doors and be like hey let me produce your stuff or there's the other route where you're just you just love it and it comes so easy because you love it and that you just want to learn it and do it yeah you know like I find inspiration on like 
any like from a pop song to a rap song to a metal song to any any particular song I'm like always analyzing just I don't know I'm that's that's my thing like I don't think I've ever been when I was younger I was a live performer and I but I think I've kind of grown out of that and I'm I'm I love analyzing songs like whether it's a pop song or any kind of like song and just being like like why did they do that there what you know Mm -hmm. why did they choose this style or whatever it's it's crazy you ever listen to those breakdowns where they showed it show like all the individual elements of a track oh yeah yeah i've listened to um the guy i know i i I, i'm like i say this all the time but um the guy that produced uh some of dua lipa's uh, biggest hits that guy is crazy and like you break down the individual tracks and it's what I've learned is it's the subtleties it's like as a listener you don't hear it you're never you'll probably never hear it but it's it's like the little snare drum that makes it sound just a little bit fatter or like that little echo that's like off to the left or to the right or just the little stuff that you, like as a listener you're you'll never hear or consciously know about it but it's in the background uh-huh. and yeah. that's the sh- that's the shit that like you you pile it up and you you make it you give it depth and like subconsciously it's just like comes together and you're like i love this song and i don't know why yeah. and it's like it's crazy i think like, that's the difference whoa. between like you know a Dua Lipa record and like you making it at home in your bedroom like there's definitely like a difference and that's what kind of what I'm trying to say here is like that that's a difference a good producer will make just the same as you know an indie movie might have like the best story ever or whatever but you know if you don't have all the elements it's it's not like a Oscar winning epic and um like they'll all the time because Dax is an actor and he does this podcast he's always like dude when I watched this and I saw you put your sunglasses on top of your he was like that little tiny detail another actor is going to notice it people like us watch those analytical videos and we dissect it and we can hear the bass line in the song and we know we kind of we kind of know why it sounds good because it's those little subtle things and we're interested in that but you're right the average listener the average watcher they don't think of that but there's a movie, there's a reason why those things are winning Grammys and awards. And it's it, those little nuances that add that depth. And it's just fascinating to me. I've always been fascinated by it. And I think it's great that you're also fascinated and like dive into stuff like that too. I don't, I don't think that there's a big difference. I mean, um, it really is just about your ear because the guy from Owl City did all his stuff on a laptop before a home studio and all the laptop stuff was even a thing and like that guy got like a number one and got uh you know whatever he got but I think I think it just has to do with the ear and like the awareness like you were saying where you can take a step back from your role in the song and be like and kind of pay attention to everything Mm. like what's the guitarist doing what's the bass doing what's the hi-hat doing um, should we put in backup vocals? Uh, is there is this song dry? Should we add some synth in there to give it a little bit or pads to give it some depth? Like, should we have a horn or a fruit, flute line that's in the background that no one can hear? You know. Um, so you you may have seen Javi. You may have watched this because it has to do with Blink, but uh, it was one of those like a breakdown video. And it's funny because you'd have to believe of how many times I've listened to all the small things, but it's one of those subtle things you were talking about that does something to it. And they were talking about, he was like breaking it down track by track. And during the chorus, all they're saying is like, nah, nah, you know, but what makes it so huge and so big. And, um, and now after he showed, like, after he showed me this on like, on that video or whatever i can't not hear it but there's a synth going on yeah have, have you watched that? it goes wah, 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 yeah. Wah. yeah but it's like what carries it it's what makes it like huge you know 
But it's just that's that why subtle thing. That, that's why Jerry Finn is like my fucking favorite producer. Yeah. He's my favorite. It's just like and that's such an outside, like you wouldn't even realize it was there, I don't feel like, unless you watch that. Now I can hear it. Like it's crazy, you know, but yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to do a quick flashback. So when Javi said, uh, you know, what, tell me what you guys tell me about your week. And Josh was like, no, I'm not repeating myself. In my head, I immediately thought of a Javi quote from back on tour. And so I wanted to respond to Javi <laughs> saying, what said was said. And I can't and remember. I don't remember. <laughs> oh, I love that. What was said was said. <laughs> God, I don't that is I don't the best. I almost forgot about it. As y'all need to make sure that's on that's on my grave. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. You heard it here it. first. Yeah, out of hobbies too. What said was said, and I don't remember. I don't remember. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> there's, you know, there's a lot of good hobby quotes throughout the years. Um. TJ, did you tell us about your turkey week? Um, Thanksgiving was good. Um, yeah, we made tofurkey. We just hung out. Like, nothing really, you know, nothing really exciting. What is tofurkey? <laughs> it's, uh, it's like a vegan roast, and it's basically a ball of, like, I'm assuming it's vital wheat gluten, which is what all this fake meat shit is made out of, which is horrible for you, but you still just eat it occasionally. But it tastes just like turkey, man. Like, texture, everything. It's just, like, they put it in this little ball. They, like, put rice and shit inside of it, and you get gravy, like, vegan, you know, gravy and it's all very special and I made asparagus and rolls and just kind of had like a, you know, we go see Jordan's family for in, in the daytime and have like a plate traditional stuff. But I like to have like a sit down dinner, light the candles, bring out the China, all of that. Um, and hopefully one day I'll have a house where I can host because I would really love to do that. But right now in our tiny little apartment, we can't even have two friends over for dinner. Like we don't even have that many chairs so it's just the two of us just a nice relaxing thanksgiving y'all could do like the the japanese and do the little cushions on the floor, on the floor. And... Yeah. yeah why not <laughs> that would work with tofu um i mean it's, it's funny everybody talking about their week so at the beginning of the podcast we were talking about like you know things you can say or can't say and it's funny because now it's like we celebrated Thanksgiving and now I'm even in that zone in my head. It's where it's like, do I say Thanksgiving or do I say something else? Because I, I have a friend and she is native American and I didn't think about that. I was like, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? Your family coming to town? And she's like, yeah, I don't celebrate Thanksgiving. I don't celebrate the holiday of like, genocide to my people <laughs> and i'm just like that's a fair point um and i was like in all fairness uh in my defense <laughs> i don't think i've ever my family has ever like talked about the history of it or even like had any sort of like we don't really celebrate anything as like it's it was kind of it's literally just a day where the family gets together and we eat a lot but we never like discuss the origins of it or you know it's like we don't celebrate it in a like oh praise columbus or anything so i was just like yeah i get why you wouldn't but in all fairness it's just a day to eat <laughs> it's just a day to eat a lot of food and i guess just be thankful for your family and friends and she sounds like a downer <laughs> well she laughed when she said it It was like more of a joke she was poking fun oh. at me but but it, yeah, but it okay. was one of those things that it's just like oh yeah it's like okay the origins of this holiday and there's still you know there's people here that were negatively affected by all those events it, i think we're all just learning and growing and changing i think it's actually great i think it's one of the greatest things about the internet is that we're learning that not everybody does things the way that we do and like 
coming to terms with that as Americans, as, you know, white people in general. Um, I'm not white. For some, we're for most, for three quarters of us. <laughs> Unless, I'm, I don't know. I'm Italian. Javi's the diversity. I'm the German. Bastards. Anyway, No, I'm not. No, I'm saying like even just, I don't know. You can't speak the other white. Remember? We're, we're a diverse. Wasn't this like a thing where like 2020 white people were not allowed to talk at all about any color of, uh, what is it called? People of color? People of color. I don't know. Yeah. Javi is a person of color and we roast you just the same. So. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, but Josh is Italian, so he gets roasted the most. <laughs> <laughs> i'm italian and polish and oh, irish yeah italian irish polish bastard <laughs> oh my god <laughs> wow yeah see well, can we just hey, talk about movies again <laughs> yeah exactly i think it's pretty yeah we should just talk about movies though uh i think it's pretty cool i think we're a kind of a diverse band just having you know the female perspective we've got you know javi who's obviously Mexican. The Mexican perspective. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's funny. Yeah. How yeah. else would I well, say that it? We, we, I don't know. <laughs> Hispanic. Hispanic. Latino. Latin, Latino. Yeah. 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 yeah I'm from you, Texas. Or, I think we got a lot of perspectives. Your family's and we, heritage and history is goes back further than that, you know? That's true. And we work with a lot of different people who have different perspectives and have a lot of friends with different perspectives. And I think it's cool. I and think it, it is really cool. We're growing. Yeah, it, it's more, I think it's just more fun and like the world has so much to offer and it's better to, I like, like when I go to a buffet, I want one of everything. It's like, <laughs> I'm not going to just have Mac and cheese, you know? So yeah, man, <laughs> variety is the spice of life. Spice of life. Exactly. Nice. And, uh, you know, the, the phrase that I coined, um, <laughs> you know, when it um, when it comes to friends, everyone is my type. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? <laughs> you feel me, Josh? I feel you. <laughs> I don't know what you mean at all. You're... This took a, this took <laughs> Everybody a weird can turn. be your friend. Yeah, it makes it makes sense. You know, it's like when when people talk about like dating or whatever, they're like, you know, what's your type? You know, or everybody, you know, it's like you got the specific. It's like, oh, you're not into these. You're only into this. And so what I'm saying when it comes to friends, everybody is my type. All people. It's non-exclusive. I have a theory. <laughs> nice. Oh no. Oh God, let's go. Strap in. <laughs> okay, we're just buckle up. For, for everyone that's online, uh, fasten your seatbelts. This can be a wild one. So I have a theory, and I'm not sure if I've told anybody this, but wouldn't the world be crazy if like just everyone was racist? <laughs> like if just everyone, like no one was allowed to be not racist. It's like you just hate everybody. Then we would all have something in common. You know, we could all get along. <laughs> we just all hate everybody. We but just it, all hate everybody. But that only works if you hate everybody. It's bad when you hate only a specific type of person. Like it's okay if if your hate but is that not would explosive. be but that would be you. You would Dude, just that hate makes a specific no, type of person. No sense. If everybody hated everybody, everyone would just sit there literally alone isolated no because whenever like like say if i hated you and josh hated you josh and i'd be like dude look at that crazy one over there see but Isn't you're she still crazy? singling and and out like you're still singling out somebody else though like so you would only get i know along... but it's not us no that's what's that's what racism <laughs> yeah is. i mean uh, essentially you're just saying <laughs> That's what racism That's is what racism right is. now. Because hey, TJ would not same... agree with our views, you know. Right. <laughs> like right. in that hypo in that hypothetical. Did we? Just, so nothing would be did different. Did we just really. describe racism in like two in like five year olds' term? So but a maybe bunch of people. Here, here's maybe hate how Javi's the theory same works. Person. Here's how Javi's theory works. If everybody hated everybody, 
but your demonstration of hate wasn't outward. You're more like just catty. You keep your hate inside. And so to everybody's face, you're like nice. If everybody is nice to each other when they're around each other, but then behind their backs, they're just super catty. And Dude, like, now you're explaining. You're just explaining humanity now. You're, yeah. <laughs> you're just describing that's humanity. Javi described racism. Like this is the world we live in. Welcome. Well, the only, okay. So the only reason I have this theory is because this is from personal experience. I know people that talk shit about their own race. Yeah. It's like, they're like, oh, look at that insert word here. And it's like, but that's, but you're the same race. So that's why I'm just thinking in my head, like deep down, aren't we all like that? Like, seriously, if you're, like, in a crazy, shady neighborhood, like, have you never locked your doors and been like, yeah, I don't know about this place? Well, I think when they're saying it about your your own ethnicity, it's more of, like, it's usually directed towards somebody that, like, makes you look bad. It's like when you have a family member that's, like, in prison, you know, you disassociate yourself because it makes your family look bad if they're in and out of prison. You know, Complete it's, strangers. It's like, it's, it was complete strangers right no but i'm just saying like when you associate so if you're of a certain ethnicity like i'm white you know i'm associated with other white people so then when you see somebody that represents you so to speak so it's like yeah i see people i'm like man they're white trash but that person's trashy Ooh. it's not it's not necessarily but i think <laughs> it's not necessarily directed in a like oh i'm hating them because of who they are genetically you're hating them because you're just like, this is how they represent, how they're acting. It's their actions and stuff that I think is perfectly fine to think negatively towards people based <laughs> on their actions. Like, <laughs> in how you represent yourself. Steve, let's get down to the nitty-gritty. Yeah, the nitty-gritty oh, is there's Lord. terrible people in every ethnicity and background and there's really nice I just I, in every I think if it's like okay look racism has to do with inequality right one person is being left out if I hate everybody everybody's equal you know there is no inequality all right man maybe we should move on from this point thank you for sharing your theory with us Javier or how right. you could just love everybody and then that's equal exactly too. it's the same thing <laughs> That's what we're going for, right? World peace, everyone to love each other, love their man. Isn't that what every major religion supposedly Yeah, but touts? nobody can do that. So that's why we got to do this second option. It's just theory. I mean, like, let's try to hate each other. I was like, we can't fix it, so destroy it. <laughs> it's the only option. No, I try to be compassionate. Uh, it's about compassion, empathy. It doesn't, like, yeah, of course, love for your fellow human being, but, like, com also compassion, empathy, even for the assholes or the whatever. It's like they obviously had something in their life that made them that way. So I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but, you know, I like to, I like think about that a lot before I judge somebody. Like, what would they have gone through that made them like this? And I pity a lot of people and, and, um, in lieu of maybe having a negative opinion of them or anything like that. I'm just like, you know what? This person's human. Just like me. They obviously got brought up in a certain way or whatever. They, they have hate in their heart, but I'm not going to. And move on with my life and surround myself with people that, you know, huh. <laughs> lift me up and make me feel better about myself <laughs> i don't know why i fucking hang out with you guys but <laughs> there you go there's there's my soapbox <laughs> yes that was funny well i hope it was also a good point you guys we should all be compassionate we should all try to be empathetic i think if people were more empathetic towards once another one another and uh, put themselves in somebody else's shoes that there'd be a lot more understanding in the world. Right. Yeah. I think that's something think, we're talking about that now, but I think, you know, it's on par for the Neo Devs because I think that's a big part of who we are as a band and what we try to convey with our music and our lyrics is like, you know, empowering people and and spreading love and encouragement. 
And so yeah. I don't think it sounds like a Dr. Like, Phil show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, call us doc. The nearly deads are the Dr. Phil of rock and roll. So <laughs> is that a new <laughs> thing? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't so know, you man. Could, the next album should be the Dead Phil. That no, um, that that takes it in a whole different direction. <laughs> the Dead Phil. <laughs> Who did we murder? Oh wow. Oh, it could be like a clue, like Clue the game, it could be like a board game. Who did we kill? <laughs> Well, Amanda Palmer did Who Killed Amanda Palmer, and it was a take on, like, Who Killed Roger Rabbit, or Who oh, Framed cool. Roger Rabbit, anyway. Who, no, 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 Who Killed Amanda Palmer, there was something else that she based it off of, but oh, Who Framed Roger, Who Killed the Nearly Deads, that's our next album, and it'll be a murder yeah. mystery theme uh, concept album. And we'll have, like, weird subtext and all the songs that you have to, like, play it backwards to... Yes. To find the yes. clues. Yeah. <laughs> I like the name it's... Who Killed the Nearly Deads, though. That's pretty cute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it all like leads to them discovering Josh got fired at the end <laughs> when they piece it all together. <laughs> <laughs> that was His pretty damn good. Trial period's <laughs> over. <laughs> trial period's that over. That was bitch. pretty damn good. <laughs> You're out. Yeah. <laughs> Josh. Ten years later, we've decided you're not a good fit for the band. <laughs> you know, we we appreciate your audition, your ten year audition. That would be <laughs> that would be a hilarious like audio clip. Like five minutes after the last song's played, just <laughs> you guys. Get Josh become like this successful businessman and like have like forty albums that have gone platinum, and then <laughs> and people are like, "So we heard Josh was." in used to be in the nearly dead what do you think about that steve and steve's like yeah we're gonna go ahead and fire him <laughs> <laughs> despite all his accolades right yeah <laughs> like you'll never be good enough for us josh <laughs> <laughs> you'll never make it in this we're, industry no oh, we're man. so mean we no we agreed <laughs> to stop being mean to josh a long time ago you guys but it's it's not mean when it's clearly sarcasm right uh yeah <laughs> we're we're being sarcastic you guys are joking right yeah no. <laughs> josh knows i'm gonna propose to him eventually yes, so absolutely well yeah me and steve will be married mm, <laughs> i think can... we'd make a good couple yeah absolutely. we'd be fun we'd be fun yeah. You guys would be good roommates. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Josh. It'd be a good it would be an it'd be an awesome press run. The nearly dead uh <laughs> yeah. have a gay couple in the band. <laughs> yeah, I told y'all we were diverse. So instead of yeah. instead of a female lead, people would be like, So what's it like having a gay couple in your band? <laughs> I you know what? Oh, wow. that, I'll, I'll do you're it. So for, right our, for our fame and success, I'll do it. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Well, Josh, I, you know, I'm going to, I want to rent this place out and move closer to Nashville. So yeah, come be my roommate. So I don't have to pay the exorbitant amount of rent at <laughs> the cost of Nashville. Yeah. Yeah. I already, um, I, uh, I don't think that Jordan is down to move to Nashville. I don't think it's going to happen, but yeah. Know. Was that in the works or something or like an idea? Um, I mean, it's always kind of in the back of my mind, you're like moving back and being near you guys in the industry and stuff like that. It's very hard to like do anything while I'm out here, but I don't know. I'm happy. And, uh, you know, I got my whole life out here, so I don't know. I don't think I that's going to happen. I don't think it's ever going to happen. Yeah. I well, thought of you guys because I was big. painting my house. And like, plus, la well, every time I go back and I see the traffic and shit, I'm just like, no, thank you. Like, I don't really want to move there. I don't, I just want to be near the industry and stuff like that. Right. It's it's getting big. It's yeah, it's crazy. It's hard not being like, able to like go to gigs and network with people because like that's why that's what we did in the beginning. And that's why we got where we are. And it's like we don't do stuff like that anymore. So we just kind of like don't even play around town anymore. Yeah. It, yeah i miss i miss playing out for sure mm. um thank you uh killer 180 dale 
Is that from like Tucker and Dale or something? I don't know. Uh, he no. said we make, he or she said we make uh, amazing music. So thank you. Appreciate that. Do you Speaking guys have of, any? We're working on new music. We are. I wrote some lyrics this morning for Josh's song. Nice. Nice. Gosh. And I wrote a whole new song yesterday, just just <clears throat> out of the just out of the blue. Just wrote sat down and wrote a song, which was great because considering I played Animal Crossings for so long, that's like my equalizer. Like if I play Animal Crossing for so long, but then I get up and like tinker at the piano and like come up with something cool, I'm just like, All right, I was productive today. Right. That's it. <laughs> that's the key hey, right there. Nobody answered me earlier. Um for Josh's song. Right before the bridge, is it a full Dude, riff just or scrap is it a half it. riff? It's a full. Love of God, Holy love hell! It's just a full. Scrap. It's a full riff. Okay. It's a full cool. riff. Thanks. I'll get it to you guys this week. <laughs> yeah, full riff minus the major chord. I already took that out. Okay. Oh, a full. I thought you said a full riff going into the chorus. No, before no, the bridge I, coming out. Or, sorry, into the, the bridge. bridge. Double the bridge. Yeah, I doubled yeah. the bridge and took out the major note chord, but I was wondering about the riff because I wrote it down, and then I guess I wrote it down on cray with crayon. So I'm like, I don't know where it went. Yeah, you did. But I was, remember when we were doing that writing session. You yeah. were like, "Let me take notes." And you pull out a crayon, <laughs> and it's like Javi's clearly. It was like a, a highlighter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like the f the full riff riff, and then extending that cool bridge part. Okay. Yeah. But I remember everything else, so I'll have it to you guys this week. You said the full riff, right? Yes. I thought you said cool. Uh, cool. Josh's accent. The cool riff. Say no, I said I said cool bridge part. I oh. did say the word cool. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> say full. <laughs> full. <laughs> Why is there the, the cool riff with say cool the full and then bridge say full. part? Wait, full. <laughs> And cool. <laughs> Wait a second. You say fool. 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 Uh, we lost TJ. Yeah, <laughs> her mic's off. TJ. Oh. Hello. Oh, there I am. There it is. I I <laughs> I was is laughing like... so hard I like slammed my fist on my desk and like my <laughs> microphone came unplugged. Is that like a barbarian thing? Or something? I think you have like a weird Pennsylvania. Where are you like from? <laughs> West like Virginia. Pens like where'd you grow up? Like, I'm basically in Pittsburgh. It's like the tip top. So of West you Virginia. like grew up there, like. We uh, yeah, yeah. There's a northern accent. You you here. definitely have a weird like not a weird accent. Yeah. You definitely have a di diverse. <laughs> you're you're bringing diversity to the table. Yeah, um, dude, TJ, that's that's very locationist. Yeah, wow. <laughs> I, you know, I thought this band was re better regionalist. than that. That's very regionalist of you. Um, yeah. um, uh, people up here in New England that I there's so, there's some stuff that just grates my ears. You guys, like people hmm. who don't yeah. say drawer, they say draw for a drawer That's for like take this out of the drawer like your t-shirt or your underwear drawer right they say drawer. right right i'm like yeah. what what are you saying that's weird i'd say one of the biggest ones here which i don't i say wash but a lot of people mm -mm, say whoosh, mm -mm. whoosh. or wash mm. wash whoosh Warsh, yeah yeah my and stepdad like, what did says they say wash, over there? and i hate it hmm? like wash or whoosh. whoosh yeah i don't Warsh. like wash yeah i like wash i don't like wash who says worse it's like josh it's wash, like josh. a it's a pennsylvania thing but anyway There's, so full yeah. full and you say full. like when you say it sounds like you're saying fool fool full <laughs> <laughs> i feel like i'm having a dictation lesson like a like i'm teaching you elocution full i understand because of how it's spelled like there's a it's not double o like fool so when you it's said the full, full you said oh yeah full Josh, you do say fool he does. you do say fool when you start trying to say full you say full, full. doesn't he full. he's there's yeah. certain yeah. words that he says that are kind of like funny when he says them well are you like Ooh, funny like how like a clown funny <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll try to oh be more. Oh my god. Um, yeah, I'll definitely try to be better like now no, that'll you stick don't have, you well, don't, there. no you don't have to change the way you talk no one is telling you to change the way you talk i was just saying did you say josh you need to change the way you funny. talk <laughs> i didn't know if you said cool or full because you they sound the same when you say that yeah and i did say i said both of them very close together too so it was probably just like <laughs> <laughs> he's just rapping you know what you know what steve is gonna edit this podcast and then he's gonna let the jury will decide he will be like let me play this back he's gonna be like oh he said the full full riff oh no i'm sure i said full because i said cool <laughs> right after right so it was okay. like Got yeah it. but it's full full Wait. riff into the cool bridge full. yeah <laughs> it's like it's Say like dull dull fall no that's not a good comparison, no, that sounds actually. like fall now <laughs> no dull fall. it's not the same Dude. You, dull have, and fall. you have to admit that is a tedious there's it's a very tricky, subtle man. there's it's, a subtle it's kind of tricky what's to tricky? make that you that ul not sound like double ol in, in what word oh we were i was trying to say dull is the same as Cool. but it's not that sounds it's, like it's it sounds not, like fall but it's spelt the same except yeah minus the f and the d this is why like yeah. uh, this is why um people who don't speak english as their first language have such a difficult time learning english that's it makes true no because we're sense. a bunch yeah. of fucking idiots <laughs> <laughs> we just steal from other countries and take their languages and their land and and that's like, why you like, have to speak like us now happy thanksgiving <laughs> <laughs> that's on that note that was great full, it came full circle say, on that note this is we're at the end of our time guys mm -hmm. it came full circle <laughs> <laughs> damn it there it is yeah i've just taken it out of my oh, vocabulary so great <laughs> <laughs> um, all right i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up guys um thank you guys so much for watching it no it has it has flurried here but no snow we are getting a couple comments asking about the weather up north josh any snow for you guys in um old yeah Pittsburgh? there's uh not a lot there's been flurries but nothing like major just a little bit of flurries um and then Doolin says, you guys have stuck together a lot longer than a lot of other bands I've liked for a decade. So if you call it quits, you're going to have to send me a divorce decree. <laughs> like, we're going to have to pay our fans a settlement if we, yeah. if we ever saw We will. But we and will... we're keeping the kids, though. <laughs> is Josh we... the kid? Josh is the kid. We're keeping Josh. If we split up, it's like, who gets Josh on what weekend? <laughs> Josh is the car. You can have the car. No. <laughs> oh, man. Listen, we are never, <laughs> ever going to not make music. We have already proven that nothing can keep us down. We are the nearly deads. We are not the fully dead. So, yeah. Fully. <laughs> we're not we're never really alive. Dead. We're never fully <laughs> alive fully or dead. fully successful. We're just always <laughs> existing. Hey. <laughs> and that's the true meaning of the band name, you guys. Yeah, like a plague. We're just. <laughs> Or like a virus, we're just there. Aren't we all? We're nearly, like, aren't we all always nearly dead? Anything could happen at any moment. That's true. True. Deep. We're like the wow. we're like the Jason Voorhees of the rock community, where they just keep just keep killing us, and we like won't die. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're like that. No, we ain't. Or going the anywhere. Michael Myers. Did you guys see the new Halloween? God. Oh, I haven't seen that one. I, I want you know. to. Halloween Kills or something. Yeah. 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 You should see it. It's good. Um, no, I want to see it. I also want to see Candyman. I missed that one. Yeah, we're yeah. like the Michael Myers. There's going to be 20 movies of us and, uh, you know, whatever. I we, well, I, could, I can only hope, right? <laughs> I hope we get to keep yeah. making 20 albums. We can't even freaking get our shit together to make one one more. We're trying. The acoustic record. It's I, just, I'll be there on the Friday. The acoustic one, yeah. Friday, I'm going over there Friday. And, you know, I think we've all just realized that this acoustic thing is just it's gonna dude, take right no, done when it gets no, done. No, it's just my, gonna happen when it happens. I will say, Bruh. Steve was against it from the start. Oh. Dude, no, look, yeah. look, look, look. My intention and idea for the acoustic record was like, yeah, huh, it's all it's your something. fault. No, listen, listen. <laughs> I was like, 
oh, it's something simple. It's something fast that we can do really quick and it'll be easy. A year later, like, <laughs> we've got like two and a is, half songs. <laughs> this is not what I had in mind. So, right. Yeah. No, it's, and I feel like everybody's probably like Steven sabotaging things behind the scenes. And no, no I it's don't just, think that no, at all. No. No, no, it's like I would have had it done last year. You know, it's like whenever I put my mind to something, I want it like done right away. I hate waiting. But yeah, it's just one of those things that, you know, this is how it goes when we all have day jobs, but also our engineer has a family and a day job. You know, it's just like everybody is like, well, when we can fit it in and then yeah. there's holidays. If and- we were working with somebody who was like a full time producer who just like knocked it out in two weeks, that would be a different story. Yeah, if we could have yeah. like all mm-hmm. blown in and just yeah. worked on it for two weeks straight. But it this yeah, this acoustic thing's just kind of been like when we have time, we work on it. Yeah. But I promise the I fans was talking that more about we're the, doing the a very album. different approach. We're doing a very different approach on the full length. So Yeah, I feel we're like, still yeah, writing we, though. We're still writing. Proud. We want it to be great. And then uh snapshot of <laughs> TJ Frozen. Snapshot frozen she's, time. She's back. Oh she's back. Oh, oh shit. Right. I wasn't Everybody frozen. behave. Oh my yeah, you were, you were oh, frozen on our end. Mm-hmm. You oh. were like, this is the, we want this to be our greatest hit <laughs> ever. <laughs> oh, that's um, embarrassing. Uh but yeah, no, we never promised to release it this year or anything. So I think we're still on track for the full length. It's just the acoustic that's like way behind, but It'll, it'll get done. I think the timeline that we thought we had was we're learning as like independent musicians. We're just learning like timelines don't, you know, they can. I don't know. I don't know. I think we were unrealistic in our expectations. Maybe I've thrown my musician hat in the trash. <laughs> I'm no longer a musician. I'm a producer now. Are you? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Time will tell, I suppose. <laughs> About uh, time. Vo- <laughs> this voodoo ranger will tell me. <laughs> hey, if that's voodoo something you're ranger. interested in and you want to pursue, I say you should go for it and learn all you can about it. It's a hey, really thank cool... You. Thank you, TJ. I, I appreciate that. You're, you're the welcome. only one that's actually being supportive out of these no, yeah. <laughs> I'll be supportive. That's a really cool... No, Josh, part. don't be supportive of a hobby. That's yeah, not God know. damn it, Steve. You ruin yeah. everything. Remember remember when Javi texted and asked if y'all were still streaming and Josh was like, tell him no. <laughs> <laughs> I did say that, dude. Yeah. You son yeah. of a bitch. But they didn't listen to me, obviously. All right, guys. Anyway. Thank you so much for joining us in our stream. Happy birthday to Steve. Happy birthday, Steve. Yay. And we will I'm talk older. to you guys um, next time. And have a great, wonderful rest of your evening. We love you guys. Sign up for our Patreon. Thank you to all of our patrons that uh, contribute to us being able to continue to do stuff like this and create music for you guys. We appreciate you. Hope you had a good Thanksgiving and holiday season coming up. <laughs>